What's up everybody? Uh, welcome to my channel. I recently submitted this park called Lavapalooza for Dirk Link's monthly ride creation contest in Open Roller Coaster Tycoon 2. He hosts really competitive and high quality contests all the time on his Discord server, usually in NCSO, which is no custom scenery. I'll link his channel. One of the neat things about building without custom scenery is that you've got to be really clever about using in-game scenery in unexpected ways, but also using things that aren't scenery as scenery, like roller coaster track as a roof or um, as a railing or something you'll see a lot. In this little park, something really cool is that the name of the park Lava Palooza, and the sort of ominous tagline Eternal Tourist Trap are written in the sky with roller coaster track pieces. I wanted to create a sort of postcard here, and I say postcard because the best part, sort of unexpected part, is that when you rotate the view, the sky writing completely disappears. Now, in this video, I will show you how I made this, uh, show you how you can make this, and then I'll do a quick, rather simple demo of what building this type of 2D art looks like. But first off, how does this work? Um, all of the pieces in the Lava Palooza artwork are diagonal track pieces. Unlike the orthogonal, uh, the straight track pieces, which can be copied and pasted using the tile inspector in one go, uh, the diagonal pieces take up four tiles a piece. Each of the four tiles is home to a slice of the diagonal piece. And conveniently for us, each um, slice is only visible from exactly one angle. That means that each diagonal track piece contains four very special objects, which can be arranged in 3D space to create shapes and images in 2D space without any worries about how it looks from the other sides. Um, by the way, I use a lot of keyboard shortcuts to control the tile inspector functions. It speeds things up a lot when you're copying and pasting all over the place. <laughs> Z to rotate. I wanted to see what all of the available slices were. So I set up this save file, which you can find in the description called diagonal gallery. Here, I've separated each of the diagonal track pieces from this very three-dimensional coaster into their 2D slices, and then arranged those slices in their slice families. This is useful for seeing all at once what graphics the game has. Um, right now, we're looking at all of the diagonal sprites for a steel coaster, but with the cheat enabled, um, I can change the ride type to something arbitrary, like a wooden coaster. Uh, and you'll notice that not all of the pieces are available anymore. That's something that's especially noticeable for the monorail. For example, um, I made a spreadsheet of what pieces are available from what types. Uh, although if you're experienced in the game, you might already have a feel for what these limitations are. Of course, Separating these out is really tedious. Um, the pieces are useful, but it's really tedious. So I made a great big bench and <laughs> it's kind of like dumping out and sorting all of your Legos. Remember, these are completely invisible from three of the four angles. And yeah, so this isn't every ride type, but I spent quite some time figuring out what the best starting palette should be. And I say starting palette because in addition to being able to change any of the colors, you can change any of the coaster types really easily at any time. It's easy that way to customize my bench into one that contains your favorite coasters, if you want. Um, just don't use the monorail slots for a wooden coaster, for example, because you won't get all your track pieces. I think this is the most useful stuff in the game, but there are some other track types I'm interested in using more, like a Giga Coaster, for example. Um, oh, 
give you a, what I'll do is I'll give you a real quick tour of what I've found to be the most useful pieces in here, over here, and then put something together on the canvas over here. And uh, yeah, I'll start with these guys. See, we got the steel coaster. This is, uh, we saw that earlier, this is the one with all of the available pieces. It includes these on the ends. Uh, these are extra curve options that the others do not have. Uh, they combine very well with the invert uh, pieces. So you can get things like uh, combining these lines together to get a whole bunch of different patterns and things. Uh, some really thick lines, um, that kind of stuff. And then together their curves work for outlining a lot of shapes and things. You can get very creative with that. Um, of course, I want to draw attention to these very unique shapes. Um, between the two of these groups, the inverted and the steel groups. Um, these guys are really useful and um, for details and things. I use them for flowers in my lava entry. Then we have, uh, I'm not gonna spend too much time on these. Uh, yeah, I'll dig in deeper probably in upcoming videos um, once I have a little bit more put together to say. But in the wooden coaster, there's this guy that's a bit blocky, um, fills a lot of space very quickly. But you'll notice with a lot of these pieces, the colors are rarely exactly what you want. And now with these um, as space fillers, these blocky pieces are very dark. Um, so I actually found that a better alternative for filling space. Well, maybe not better, but different um, for different situation alternative for filling space to use these guys. Um, and they are much smaller, but they stack great. And if you uh, zoom out, zoom in, it all looks great. Uh, you can get a very consistent color. Wooden coaster is the way to go for filling space. I I, I gotta say, if you included the mini roller coaster, and that might seem random, but the mini roller coaster has what I'm convinced is the smallest piece available, which is these little dots. I love that. They also have the thinnest steep pieces. The steep pieces are somewhat rare, really. Um, and you don't always want to use like an invert steep piece. Um, these are pretty thin. But basically, we got the same thing in a bunch of different varieties of thickness. Monorail is the thickest. Uh, suspended monorail. Mini suspended coaster. Steeplechase is the last. Um, it's good to have as another option. It's also very thin and... Uh, also has this uh, texture. Yeah, well, at any rate, I think one of the best and uh, most simple uses for this technique, um, which I'll show you right now, is writing text in the void above or around your finished park for a title or name or something like that. Um, I'll show you how using a really simple font, uh, and I plan on posting a video soon specifically about this font and uh, potentially more fonts. Uh, you only need five pieces to do the whole alphabet this way, uh, and we only need four for what I'm building here. Uh, I'd like to build this with the monorail, but any of the stick-like ones will work just fine. These are our four pieces we need, and the first step is to take these pieces over to the canvas. Um, that way we don't have to scroll across kingdom come every time we want to copy and paste something okay to stay organized i mark the land where i'm placing my pieces because once they're floating up in the air it's impossible to tell what the footprint of your creation is and i think that's really good to know um i try to stay on one zigzag line uh, in the center unless i need to layer something by putting it in a row behind or in front of this main row. Um, the major downside to this whole thing is that it's really tedious, of course. It sucks because unlike a lot of other things you can design in the game, it's hard to tweak what you're making here as you go. I'd recommend having a game plan before you start throwing these pieces up. Uh, really figure out where you want everything before you get started because it's just not something you can figure out along the way. Um, right, but uh, yeah, and uh, there we have it. Now for the best part, um, enabling sandbox mode, which is a cheat here, makes cleaning up extremely easy and uh, satisfying. 
we can of course uh mess with the track type from here which is fun um some work better than others uh I think there's a lot of potential for innovation here. Uh, thanks for watching. Be sure to let me know if you have any questions, of course, and look out for more videos coming soon. <laughs> See you.